computers and programmers need to talk to each other. But they don't speak the same language. Computers understand machine language. Programmers prefer programming languages. C++ is one of them. There is a job for a translator. The name of the translator is compiler. The code in C++ is called source. The code in machine language is called binary. We write the source, then we call the compiler. Compiler takes the C++ code and turns it into a machine language binary. Then the computer can execute the binary. Our goal is to make a simple C++ document, call the compiler, make the binary and execute the binary. We will need two basic apps that every computer has. They are text editor and command line terminal. Your computer definitely has them. We can't do any programming without these two apps. We need a text editor to make source files. We need the terminal to give commands to the computer. Today we will be giving two main commands to the computer. The first one will be, dear computer, please call the compiler. And the second command will be, dear computer, please execute the binary. Let us start the terminal up. My computer has operating system called Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux. And this is how I find the command terminal on my computer. I start by clicking on the bottom right corner. Then I search for the word terminal. And then it is sufficient to do the left click and the terminal will start. However, I want to make my computing environment very friendly. The terminal needs to be very easy to access. This search that starts at the bottom right corner is not convenient enough. Not for something like terminal. The terminal is the most important part of any computer. It deserves the most respect. I want it to be the most accessible thing on my computer. So, Instead of the traditional left click, I do the less conventional thing. I do the right click. And then I choose add to favorites. Now we have achieved something amazing. The terminal is in the left bar of the main computer screen. I can now press the escape button twice. And now I can access the terminal by clicking on the icon in the left bar. When it comes to C++ compilers, there are two possibilities. Your computer either has one or your computer does not. We will now check whether there is a compiler. If there isn't, then we will install it. First, open the terminal app. Then type C++. If you get the message, fatal error, then I have good news. You can start celebrating. There is a C++ compiler. The compiler was offended by, by how it was called. The compiler doesn't like to be called with one short, simple line, C++. But for now, this is good news. This means that there is a compiler, and it gets easily offended. Now what if you are not lucky? What if your computer does not have a compiler? 
let me show to you how to recognize a computer without a compiler and what to do with such a computer. If your computer does not have a compiler and if you type the command C++, then you will get the message command C++ not found. The message can be slightly different based on the computer and the operating system. Now let's do the installation. Very likely you will see the suggested command for the installation. I have Ubuntu, but if you have something different, Mac or some other Linux distribution, then you should follow the suggestion. Otherwise, you can look what I'm doing. On the Linux, and in particular on Ubuntu, this is achieved by first updating the system. The first command you need to give is sudo apt update. You will need to type your computer password the main password because you are calling the sudo command. Then you need the command sudo apt upgrade. You may need to restart the computer after these commands. So if you want to be safe then you should now restart the computer. Most likely that's not needed so you can just go ahead and run the following command. The command to install the compiler is sudo apt install g++. Notice that the last word is g++, not c++. To check whether the installation was successful, you need to type c++. If you get this scary message, fatal error, no input files, then it means that you successfully installed the compiler. The next thing to do is to make the source file, run the compiler, get the binary and execute the binary. The graphical user interface will let us observe the files as they are made. Click on this icon and then look as the files appear. The command mkdir in the terminal will create a new folder. The name that we will use is cpp folder. The graphical user interface sees this new folder. It's still empty. The command cd takes the terminal to this new folder. That's the place to do all the work. It is time to create the first source file. We start the process inside the terminal. The command nano followed by the name source01.cpp is the first step for creating the source file. Now nano is not the most comfortable environment. It is needed just for the first version of the source document. That version will be tiny, only few characters. We'll just type one comment. The compiler will ignore this line since it starts with two slashes. Such line is called a comment and comments are ignored by the compiler. We are done with nano. Now you can click on Ctrl and X and then press Y and then look how this new file has appeared. Its name is source01.cpp. Our entire C++ code will be inside this file. We will write the code using a more advanced text editor. 
you can go ahead and double click on source01.cpp. You will see that our old writing is waiting for us. We start by adding this text. Include IO stream, int main, return zero and close the curly braces. Don't ask yet what this means. For the next month or so, when you are just making the first steps in C++, make sure that you always write these lines as your first step in every program. Most C++ programs must have these lines. Later we'll learn what they mean. Now these are commands that I can explain. The command double a comma b comma c with semicolon in the end is called declaration. We make an announcement that the variables a, b and c will be real numbers. The word double means real numbers. After this command we will be allowed to put real numbers inside the variables a, b and c. We won't be allowed to put stories, books or sequences inside these variables. Only real numbers. And only in a, b and c. Nothing can go in d or z unless we declare these as well. The command std c in and then two bigger signs and then a is making the request that the value from the keyboard is inserted into the variable a. The name std c in will mean keyboard for the first few months. This second command is very similar user types something on the keyboard and that thing goes straight into the variable b. Then c becomes the sum of a and b and then we print the variable c on the screen. This is done using the command std c out c. Fresh C++ coders should behave as if std c out is just a way to say screen or display. We take the content of C, we place it on display. Let's add extra C out to our code. This directive is here to put the cursor to the new line. Our code is good to go. We must save the work we are allowed to close the text editor. We have our source. This is how we call the compiler. First type C++. After C++ we type the source file. After the source file we type negative O. The last thing to do is to pick a name for the binary file. Let's choose binary01 dot b. Look at this folder. It has the source file. Let's see how a fresh beautiful file appears as a result of our last command. Usually all the work is quiet. But if we were to see it, this is how it would look like. Our binary 01.b is ready to be called. We do it with the directive dot slash binary 01.b. The software that we created will accept two values. The first goes to the variable a, the other value goes to b. The value c is calculated and displayed.
the command ls minus l shows all the files that our folder has. There are two files so far. This is also what we expected. We will edit the source. We will update the software that we wrote. It will display the text before the user gives the two real values. Make sure you save the source file before you close it. If we run the software, the update won't be there. It's still the old program. It takes A and B, it calculates C, but it failed to give us the message at the start. Here is why. The binary has the old program. If we wish to update the binary, we have to call the compiler after the source was edited. Let's do that. We are happy at last. Our program was updated. Source and binary have their separate lives. If you update the source, you have to call the compiler. Let's take a very drastic step. Let's erase the source. We'll keep the binary, but the source will be erased. This is achieved with the command rm followed by the source file that we wish to delete. Look how the source disappears. Without the source, we are able to execute the binary. It works. Without the source, we are not able to change the binary. Let's see what we were able to do in this video. We wrote a source that was a C++ file. We called the compiler. We received and ran the binary. If we have the binary, we can be without the source. Software without the source is called proprietary software. The opposite to proprietary software is open source software. Such software has the source available together with the binary. That's all for this video. Please visit this website. There you will find texts and videos about math and computer science.